The Big Show. All right, Greg, let's dive right into it. And I don't know that we need to spend a ton of time on Bryce Young to Carolina. We kind of thought this was going to happen. I guess the question there is when you look at Frank Reich and the offensive coaching staff, is there a, is there a particular system that you think Bryce Young is best suited for, Greg? Um, I mean, I think with Bryce Young, a couple of things that you you want to have. Number one, you want to make sure that the interior of your offensive line is really firm because obviously Bryce Young, and we saw this throughout his last year at Alabama, is outstanding making plays outside of structure. Um, he's got tremendous spatial awareness. He, he understands intuitively where his players are, where the defense is. But as we know in the NFL, he's still going to have to play from the pocket. <clears throat> so ultimately, you're going to have to really make sure that the interior of your offensive line is strong because that, that controls the depth of the pocket, as you know, Ross. I mean, you played there. So, uh, you know, that that's something to really look at with this team right now. And as you look right now, you know, I think the interior of that that offensive line, <coughs> excuse me, is is a little it's a little uncertain. So that's just something to keep in mind as we kind of look ahead with the Carolina Panthers. Moving on, let's get to uh, C.J. Stroud in Houston. After all that, Greg, all that conversation, the Texans still take him number two. I would expect him to play. I guess what concerns me a little bit about Stroud is, man, I'm not overly impressed by the receiving options that he has there, Greg. I feel like they're going to probably lean on running the ball with Pierce and and maybe he's getting some completions with Dalton Schultz. Although I think they brought in Robert Woods to have another professional receiver for him. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look, they're going to get John Mitchie back this year, who I thought was a really, really good prospect when he came out of Alabama. Um, they actually drafted two receivers, two receivers who I particularly liked on tape and Tank Dell in the third round and Xavier Hutchinson, who I very much liked in the sixth round. Um uh, they still have Damian Pierce. They brought in Devin Singletary as a, as a free agent. You mentioned Schultz, who's kind of a security blanket kind of tight end. Um, I think that's ultimately what they'd like to do. Um, we know with D'Amico Ryans, not that he – obviously they understand the value of the quarterback or they would not have drafted C.J. Stroud. But I think that they're trying to build a defense uh, and a run game that can keep games together. Stroud, you know, it, the offensive line is is probably okay. You know, obviously Tunsil is a big-time left tackle. They're hoping for much more from Kenyon Green at left guard, who was a first-round pick a year ago. Um, so, you know, I think they're looking, and, and this might be cliched, but true in their case, they're looking for a relatively balanced offense that can control pace and tempo of games and not put the burden on Stroud to have to throw it 40 or 45 times every week. But much of that then depends on your defense. Totally agree. Let's get to Anthony Richardson at four. Here's my question with him, Greg. Do you think because he only has 13 starts that you let him sit and watch behind Minshew for a while until he's ready? Or do you think you get him out there as soon as possible so he can start to get that experience and learn on the run from some of his mistakes? Well, I think they're going to play him right away. And in fact, as you know, Ross, I do my, all my evaluations before the draft, so I have no idea where players are going to go. But I'm going to read to you the final line in my transition when I finished doing Richardson. And I watched a lot of Richardson. I said I could see Richardson early in his career working in an offense similar to the Eagles offense with Jalen Hurts with multiple run game concepts that start with the quarterback and a pass game that works off the run game with defined reads and throws given the greater predictability of defensive, defensive alignments and coverages. And it kind of worked out exactly that way because of the new head coach in Indianapolis. So I think you're going to see Richardson play from day one and because of the running element, 
The run game will start with him. That's the way it works with the Eagles, as you well know. The run game starts with Jalen Hurts, and I think he will play early. Yeah, I think he probably will as well. I guess you also want to make sure he's at least in a good enough place where he knows what he's doing. Um, I'll be curious to see how that unfolds. Let's talk about B. John Robinson, Greg, at number eight to the Atlanta Falcons. You know, a lot of talk about running backs, a lot of talk about how high they should go. Tyler Algier, I thought, did a really good job for the Falcons last year. But I think it's pretty clear, especially with a young quarterback like Desmond Ritter, that Arthur Smith wanted, as you would call it, Greg, a foundational piece of his offense, a, a, a guy to run the offense through, and that's Bijan. And that's the way Arthur Smith has been. And it's not only based on Desmond Ritter, which you make a great point there, Ross, because obviously he's only a second-year quarterback with four starts, I believe, under his belt. Um but B. John Robinson is is a special prospect. I When I did him, I didn't really think there was a weakness in his game other than he's a running back, and therefore you never knew where they where he'd get drafted. But obviously he got drafted eighth, I believe. Um, but, you know, another pick that, that reflects how they see themselves was Matthew Bergeron in the second round. Now, Matthew Bergeron played left tackle at Syracuse. I really liked his tape a lot. I studied him last summer from 2021 and this year from 2022. And most people I talked to believed he's really a guard, uh, the way in which he run blocks. He's an outstanding run blocker. He's physical. And that's what Arthur Smith wants. Now, we can debate whether that's the way to win in the league. That's a whole different debate. But this is how they choose to want to play. And if they choose to want to play this way, they want a big-time runner. Now, Tyler Algier did very well, but he's not at the level of B. John Robinson. Well, and also, Greg, two other thoughts on that. In fairness to Arthur Smith, with the cards he's been dealt at quarterback so far, I think this is kind of the way they have to win. I mean, I don't think they I don't think they think they can win with Desmond Ritter throwing the ball 40 times right now. No, no. And and you know, there's m- multiple ways, by the way, to, to win and score. I mean, you can go back. I think it was the 2019 season when the uh, Tennessee Titans made it to the AFC championship game and lost to the Chiefs in, in what was a relatively close game. The Titans that year, obviously, it was Derrick Henry. They had Ryan Tannehill. They scored over 30 points a game in an offense that was clearly foundationally built on Derrick Henry. So, you know, it's always easy to say the running back's not important. These are platitudinous statements uh, that that sometimes mean something, sometimes they don't. Uh, This is the best way for the Falcons in their mind to play. They're playing with a second-year quarterback with four starts under his belt. You hit it right on the head. They're not going to be a pass-first offense. Let's get to um, Jameer Gibbs at 12 to the Lions. And I guess here's my question here, Greg. Compare, can you compare Gibbs to DeAndre Swift for me? Because obviously that's basically the move the Lions made, right? They drafted Gibbs yeah. and then they traded Swift to the Eagles. They moved on from him. So I guess they felt like they were upgrading there. Um, what? How do you compare those guys? Because watching them, you know, I don't study them as much as you do, but they both seem very explosive in, in open space. And I think Gibbs is more so. I think Gibbs is a better version of DeAndre Swift. And, you know, I was very intrigued by what Brad Holmes, their GM, said, because, you know, the big question came up is why are you drafting a running back at 12? You know, the usual questions about running backs that we just sort of skirted that issue with with B. John Robinson. And I love what Holmes said. He basically said we're drafting an explosive offensive weapon because you and I both know, Ross, that if if you reduce – the game to simplest terms what are offenses trying to do create explosive plays what are defensive coordinators making sure that they don't want to give up explosive plays so what the lions did is they drafted a player who number one can line up anywhere in your formation he does not have to line up in the backfield okay this guy is a great receiver as well as is Bijan robinson by the way but gibbs can line up anywhere in your formation and he's an explosive dimension. He can go 60 yards for a touchdown, Ross, on any given play. So they didn't draft him just to put him as an eye back behind Jared Goff. 
they drafted him as an explosive offensive weapon, and that's the way they'll they'll deploy him. Well, and you and I have talked about it before. Maybe as good a matchup as there is in the NFL is a good pass receiving running back against a linebacker. And with all these teams, Greg, playing all this two shell coverage, having the two deep safeties, the underneath stuff is what you have to go to the check downs and stuff. Well, it's nice to give the ball and a check down to a guy that can probably get more than just five yards out of it because yeah. of what he does in the open space. And there's ways to attack that too deep coverage, even if you line him up in the backfield where you can get him matched up uh, on on players, you know, whether it's linebackers, whether it's a safety, there's ways to do that. And you talk to any coach and they'll tell you the NFL is now a game of matchups. Hanging out, Greg, with my high school buddies this weekend. Cannot wait. We will be taking things to the next level, drinking some Labatt Blue Lights with our friends and living life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All right. Some of the next guys, you got to tell me, we've been mainly doing the skill guys. Yeah. But uh, but I, I want you to refresh my memory on Will McDonald the fourth and how you felt about him, Greg. Because Will McDonald the fourth at 15 and Nolan Smith at 30. That intrigues me. I'm intrigued by a difference in 15 picks between those two guys when I don't think I saw a single mock draft. And listen, mock drafts are what they are that had McDonald higher than Nolan Smith. Well, Will McDonald at this point in his career is a better pass rusher than Nolan Smith. Will McDonald is as bendy and as flexible as there is in this draft with his ability to, as we say, motorcycle lean. He can do that as well as anybody in this draft, and he can win at the top of the pass rush arc. And if you talk to coaches, they will tell you that if you cannot challenge the high side of offensive tackles, and you know this, then you can never be a great pass rusher in this league. You have to be able to challenge the high side and work from there. And McDonald, at this moment in time, now Nolan Smith is a young player who does not have a ton of experience. He was hurt this past year. Will McDonald was a three-year player at Iowa State, and he is a better pass rusher as we speak today than Nolan Smith. And just his traits suggest that he will transition effectively to the NFL as an edge pass rusher. And by the way, because Ohio State played a ton of three-man fronts, there's a ton of snaps in college throughout his career where he basically played inside of offensive tackles, and he's not going to do that in the National Football League. Interesting. Okay, let's get to the uh, wide receiver row, as I call it. Yeah. Four receivers went in a row. Smith and Jigba, Greg, um, to Seattle. Fair to say he just fits in right there in the slot with uh, Lockett and Metcalf, or are he and Lockett interchangeable between the slot and the outside? What are you thinking there? I think he's interchangeable because he's almost 6'1". Uh, so I think you'll see him because that's what Seattle does. They line people up all over. The fascinating thing about Seattle is last year they were, uh, I think, the second or third – team with the highest percentage of playing with two and three tight ends. So if you're going to draft Smith and Ajigba at 20, while you have Lockett and Metcalf, it would seem to me that you didn't draft Smith and Ajigba at 20 to play 12 or 15 snaps a game. So I'm very curious to see if they sort of make some changes in their personnel groupings on offense, because I believe last year, maybe 40 plus percent of their offensive snaps had multiple tight ends. That's interesting. The Quinton Johnston one with the Chargers, I guess that surprised me a little bit, Greg. I kind of thought, looking at Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, I kind of thought they would go with like a Zay Flowers explosive type. Now, I know Johnston's explosive. Refresh my memory on what you saw from Johnston and what he brings to the table. Does he give them the speed element that they kind of need? Well, I think, you know – and this is what we don't know, but some teams have particular, uh, you know, critical factors at positions that they like over other critical factors. And it's very possible the Chargers like big receivers. Obviously, there's a huge difference between Quentin Johnson and Zay Flowers. One is 6'3", one is a little over 5'9". So they obviously took the big receiver. Johnston 
did not run as well at the combine as many expected, but because of his length and his size, he does have a, a vertical dimension to his game. He certainly can run. Um, so, you know, they obviously opted for the bigger receiver. Look, they have Mike Williams, a big receiver. Keenan Allen is not a burner, but he's a big receiver. That just might be the kind of receiver that they prefer over smaller receivers because Zay Flowers went next and then Jordan Addison, who's 173 pounds. Yeah, that, I thought that was interesting. I like I like uh, those two guys better than Johnson, just watching them. Flowers with the explosiveness, Addison with the route running. Uh, another one that really jumped out to me, Greg, uh, the Bills moving up to get a yep. tight end when they already have Dawson Knox. And I think Dawson Knox signed a contract extension. You know, it's just interesting, isn't it, Greg? Like, that never would have happened back in the day, but – whether it's the, the increased use of 12 personnel or whether you think Kincaid uh, essentially becomes their slot receiver, Greg, like a big slot? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think that's what Kincaid is ultimately, not necessarily just a big slot, but he's certainly not a, a player you draft to be an attached tight end and block. He's a receiver. Uh, and what will be interesting because their draft suggests and their free agent signings suggest that there might be a slight change in approach. Obviously, they're not going to take the ball out of Josh Allen's hands, but they also drafted Osiris Torrance in the second round, and he is a mauling offensive guard who's much more of a run blocker than he is a pass protector. Even though he's solid and pass pro, he's a his game is built on power. So, And they signed Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. So now that you draft Kincaid, you would have to think, whatever you want to call Kincaid, you can call him whatever you want, but you would have to think he's going to be on the field, Ross. You're not trading up to draft Kincaid. Again, similar, as I said, with Smith and Ajigba, you're not drafting Kincaid to play him 12 snaps a game. So I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of Knox and Kincaid on the field together. I'm sure I'm going to talk and see you next week here, Greg, as we start to dive into some of the specific skill position, guys. Definitely need to get your thoughts on Levis with the Tennessee Titans, among others. Thank you so much for coming on the show, as always. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it.